So today we're going to do chapter one, right? Just the intro of human biology. And like I mentioned before, I'm going to try to always put the objectives of what are the things that you need to get out of this each one of the lectures. So the first one, objective one, is going to be summarizing what? The characteristics of signs of life, all right? The next one is going to describe the classification system of all living organisms. The next one, number three, we're going to talk about the different steps in the scientific methods. I know all these things seems to be weird, but I'll make sense of it and how we use it day to day. We're also going to compare the different type of sources and specific uh, information that we get. And we're going to explain the fundamental tools, right, used to learn and improve critical thinking. What is critical thinking? Anybody? Anybody? Critical thinking? To think rather than the actual issue. Correct. And to use information as a way of improving your present thinking, right? So as you gather information, as you gather data, okay, you're going to use all this data, you're going to use all this weight of thinking towards a focus of a problem, and you're able to achieve greater because you're using all the data now to back up whatever your new information is. So as the information changes, your thought process should change with it now because we have you have more tools. So we're going to talk about the importance of today's world of that science. So one of the things, one of the importance, uh, there is a lot of companies nowadays, uh, uh, they're, they're doing this for it's a really good business. Almost everything nowadays is going towards uh, science. So if you're talking about computers, it's towards science. If you're talking about uh, pretty much health, is towards science. Everything is towards science. Imagine being able to integrate a computer and a human body. Right? Enable, imagine being able to integrate a computer chip that is able to dictate events within your brain. So getting a USB drive or getting a microchip, right? Uh, and then just plug it in somewhere around your body and you that can download all that information into a legible process. Can you imagine that? So how much can you get is how much information you have in your brain that you have access to it. Right now, we are almost there. Well, almost means that we have that information, right? So if you record any information, what do you do? You use a phone, you use a tablet, you use whatever is available, right? No. The phone is an extension of your body. How many of you, when you go to school, takes your phone? Driving, running, uh, I don't know, sleeping. When you sleep, do you take your phone with you to bed? No? Yeah, okay, yeah. I was just like, I'm weird. Uh, when you go to a bathroom, some of us even take the phone inside the shower because you want to watch a movie or whatever it is that you're doing with the phone. You think I'm weird? All right, how many of you have taken the phone inside the shower? Thank you. I'm not weird. So, just you're doing something and you don't want to stop, right? So, the phone is an extension of yourself. Imagine being able to integrate the phone without being able to access it manually. So, nowadays you have a lot of software, right? or AI that are able to listen to you and you don't have to touch your phone. Like Google, Cortana, I don't know, Siri, whatever, right? And you can tell commands to the phone and the phone will react or act with how you actually touch in the phone. Oh, change it. I wanna see next week whatever movie, right? And it's able to open it up or just, you know, open up the maps or whatever it is that you're looking for. So imagine being able to do that, not by speaking, but through a thought process. It means you think about it, you don't have to move your mouth, you think about it and that electronic information, right? The nerve impulses of your nervous system are able to connect with that machine. Hopefully now by Bluetooth, it will be already integrated, right? And you're able to pull the information anywhere you want to and you're able to access the internet. Can you imagine something like that, right? So nowadays, well, you have the HoloLens, which is a little further than normally we have, right? You guys know what the HoloLens is? You guys ever seen the HoloLens? So the HoloLens is actually a machine that you put on, right? It's just a device 
that you put is a helmet, not a helmet, it's like a, a band or something like that that you put on. It has little screens on the front, and you're able to download apps. And these apps are able to interact, and you can see the apps. Uh, you can you can see the movies, you can see things, and you can create things 3D on the actual world. So right now, when I'm talking to you, I could be actually watching a shark moving or uh, playing Nintendo at the same time that I'm talking to you guys in my headset. Like, just a pair of glasses like this. I mean, it's your bigger. Does that make sense? But that's not it. I mean, you're able to integrate things uh, that will uh, bridge the gap of space. Some of us, and towards the future, there was a movie, I forgot what the movie is, yeah, by Steven Spielberg. Uh, this guy who actually wore the glasses and he was living on the on a world that is all virtual world, and it was in the treadmill. I'll find out what the movie is. But that's what the future supposedly will be, because even every single job that you can do, right? If these devices take take a hold, you should be able to do it from your own home. You don't have to drive anymore. You can work virtually, okay? Eventually, right? This is what we're talking about future. So all these are just events of changing or interacting your physiology with technology, okay? So, what are living things, right? Uh, so, all living things enable to be alive what is required. You need to are make, made out of what? Molecules, right? There has to be something that makes a composition of these things. Now, what is the difference between living and non-living? So, what is non-living? If you talk to something, then that means it's living, correct? No. But if you don't talk to it, is that means that it's dead? No. no. What is means? What's the mean of living? Breathe. breathe is one thing, right? So animals breathe. Plants do what? Photosynthesis is a way of breathing, right? Because it uses what? CO2 and convert it into oxygen. So plants normally use the CO2 that we breathe out, right? That's why plants and trees are so important. And filter that air that we breathe out and convert that into oxygen. It only goes reverse at night. So at night plants, what they do is that they use the oxygen and convert it into CO2 only at night. But in the morning, they are good filters for our life. That's why in new populations areas, there's always gonna be an amount of trees, right? Not the ones like if you go to Southwest, uh, uh, yeah, the south of the Westchester area, which is a really old area, you see not, there's not a lot of trees. But any new development outside Westchester, all the almost every single house it has it has to have a square footage of grass and trees, by law. <clears throat> okay, so we also required so to be alive, you require energy, right? And you have raw materials that are required for you to be alive, correct? And living things require this. <clears throat> then, these living things are made out of what? Cells. Now, cells is just a structure, but what tells the cell what to do? And what gives the information? What holds the information, in other words, of life? DNA. So, I do not know what happened there. So, DNA, DNA is what holds the information, correct? Oh, there you go. I think I moved it. So DNA is what holds the information. Now, every single living thing contains, or not contains, but maintains a homeostasis. What is a homeostasis? Homeostasis is the steady state. What is a steady state? If you think about it, how many of you are cold right now? Oh, you wear cold and then you put on a sweat. So if you're cold, what does your body tell you? I want to get colder until I become a popsicle and die? No. You either shake your body, shiver, or you put something warmer or another piece of clothing, right? All you're doing is maintaining what? Your body temperature. So that maintenance of body temperature is you're maintaining a steady state, a temperature. So examples of homeostasis is what? Temperature. Like your body regulates temperature, right? When it's too hot, you start sweating. So you actually get 
rid of the excess amount of heat. When you're too cold, well, then your body tells you or your brain tells you, hey, come on, put something on or just start running or shiver. Does that make sense? What else do you regulate? <clears throat> blood pressure, bless you. Do you all maintain a blood pressure? I mean, the blood pressure is the pressure of your blood, right, inside the blood vessels. So if your blood pressure is down, what happens to you? Like if there would be no blood in your body, what would happen? You die, guys, okay? You, we need blood in our bodies to take oxygen and nutrients. So if you have too much blood, what happens? Imagine, well, you die both ways, right? So, I mean, come on, you know, wh where should I be? Well, steady state, homeostasis. Now, <clears throat> imagine if you put too much blood or your body cannot get rid of the excess of blood, right? Uh, it will be just like a balloon. You fill a balloon with water and the balloon will stand, will stand and stand and stand until a point that the balloon does what? Breaks, right? So whenever you have a high blood pressure, the veins, or well, the veins, the arteries within your uh, within your brain, they can actually pop. Pop means you have a hemorrhage. It means bleeding, massive bleeding within your brain. When there's any bleeding within the brain, well, you actually can die or just lose conscience or you lose things that you already knew. Why? Because your brain is floating in a specific fluid that does not contain blood. Anything that disturbs the fluid, it will damage your brain. It will damage you, your personality. Does that make sense? If you have too much blood pressure, that also damages your kidneys. Your kidneys is pretty much every time you drink, eat, breathe anything, there are toxins, right? Everything that you, uh, that you right now eat, it contains a little bit of toxins. Whether you think it or not, believe that. If you eat things out of a bag, right? What does that mean? What things can you get out of a bag? Cheetos, potatoes, like whatever it is, a storage, right? If you eat anything out of a can, how many of you eat things out of a can or a bag? Almost everybody, right? So almost all these things, what do they have inside? They possess what? Preservatives. These preservation solutions or these preservatives, right? They have to be what? Detoxified by your body. So who takes the toxins out? Your liver. But who makes that toxins soluble and peeable because you're gonna need to get rid of it, right? How do you get rid of things? Either by sweating, vomiting, peeing, or pooping. Does that make sense? So by peeing, almost everything that we do is by peeing. Do you do more pooping than peeing? There's a lot more urination than, right? Defecation, correct? So there's a lot more peeing, so your kidneys will take a hit because everything that is water soluble, it will excrete your body in a waste of your pee. So your body's constantly doing that, and you have the power to regenerate almost all these cells. So that's why we do not die, we age. Well, we die slowly, people say, okay? So these are just examples of steady state, okay? Like hormones, if you have too much adrenaline, the same example, if you have too much adrenaline, what will happen to your heart rate? Increases, right? But I keep giving you adrenaline, what's gonna think is gonna happen? Your heart rate is going to keep increasing. You're going to end up with a heart attack. Does that make sense? All right. So that's a steady state. So normally, we also are able to respond with the external environment. If you think about it, we talk about the temperature. The environment is changing, right? It can be cold. It can be hot. So your body is responding based on whatever you are experiencing on the body, on the surroundings, right, on the outside of your body. And you will do accommodations for it. If you're in a stress situation, your body will produce adrenaline. If you're sleeping, well, hopefully you're not producing adrenaline unless you're doing something weird in your dreams. Does that make sense? Right. Now, growth and reproduce. We all gonna grow, right? Probably not in height, but we grow in what? In mental capacity. It was a joke. So, uh, we all gonna be here. The whole reason of human biology is that at one point or the other, we should be able to give what? Offsprings, right? What are offsprings? To reproduce, to create other individuals, okay? Or create other plants, or create other cells. Now, what is your biggest legacy? People will say, what? What will be your biggest legacy? 
Okay, so he's a, he's a touchy one. So kids, mm-hmm. family, don't worry, man, I'm the same one. So mm-hmm. kids, family, that is actually my legacy. All the people will say my job, my research, my career, my friends, right? So whatever is that you leave out in the world once you're no longer here, okay? I know it's something deep, but as you age, you're gonna see that. What are you doing in this world that is gonna make a change or an impact, not into a whole world, but at least into you and the people around you, the people that you really care for, okay? Now, the next one is population and living things. All of them evolve because we are part of that population, correct? Are we living things? Yeah. So the plant in your backyard, it's a living thing, correct? And the frog in your backyard is a living thing too. So it's all part of a population, or actually part of the whole ecosystem. <clears throat> so these are just uh, signs of life. And again, you can play the video. I'm not playing the video, okay? So you have something that is microscopic. I gotta do this one. So something that is microscopic, like a single amoeba, right? Uh, uh, single virus or bacteria or parasite. Uh, these are still living things. Even though we don't see it with our naked eyes, you have critters in your body. Anybody, would you like to watch your skin? If you watch your skin right here, my skin is filled with what? All your skins are filled with what? Bacteria. So what is the bacteria that is filling your skin? It's Staphylococcus, okay? Staph, Staph aureus is number one. So Streptococcus is also found in your nasal cavity, in your oral mouth, right? E. coli, it's in your intestinal tracts. And we are depending of this bacteria to prevent other bacteria from invading our skin or invading our body. So bacteria is part of us and they're living things, right? They live on us and inside of us. So living things, we have bacteria, archaea, eukarya. So all these are what? Your domains. So domains of living things are these three. Bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Now, from domains, you have what? Kingdoms, okay? And the kingdoms is going to be what? Your bacteria, archaea bacteria, and then in other words, they're just both bacteria, right? And then on the eukarya, you're gonna have protists, animalia, fungi, and plantae. What are we? Are we you bacteria or archaea bacteria? Is what? Animalia, right? We are eukaryotes. So whenever you see the word eukaryote, right? It comes from what? The domain eukarya. So far is good? All right. So these are important. Now, what is a primitive bacteria? That is a primitive bacteria. What do we ingest? We ingest both animals, plants, right? Do you ingest any algae or mold? Anybody eats algae? From time to time, no, not usually, right? But yeah, you do. Uh, so anyway, we actually feed on what? <laughs> Pretty much on all you carry, <laughs> in other words, okay? So what is the fundamental criteria for the uses of this classification, okay? So the best thing is there is a presence, or almost all of them, there is a presence of what? Of a nucleus, right? So there could be a presence or absence of a nucleus, right? But for example, the bacteria, okay, archaea, they have a membrane-bound nucleus. So, bacteria and archaea, <clears throat> they lack a membrane-bound nucleus. So, keyword here, guys, is lack. So, normally, the nucleus has a membrane around it, like a layer of clothing. 
Okay. Now the domain eukarya, which is means us, right? We depend, we actually are part of the eukarya. We have what? Has a membrane bound nucleus. So that's important thing. We have a membrane bound. Everything else, do not. Simple as that. Okay. Now, number of cells. Well, how many cells do we have? One or many? Like a lot many, right? Trillions of cells. So we are definitely not unicellular, right? Most likely we are what? Multicellular organisms. Unicellular organism will be the ones that I told you, right? The bacteria. I mean, bacteria can be either or. What else? Huh? Some simple plants. And your protozoas. Okay, bacteria and protozoas can be unicellular. Now, type of metabolism. What type of metabolism? Well, when we talked about it, we said that humans, we possess a metabolic function. It means that we're able to ingest food, create energy out of it, and that's the way we're able to move, correct? Plants as well have metabolisms, which means what? That they're able to do what? Get energy from the soil, like for example, nitrogen, right? Or any other, like oxygen or CO2 from the air. And they use that to create what? Energy, so the plant can do what? Grow. Okay. So, what are we? Eukaryotes? Are we unicellular? No, we are multicellular. And then on the multicellular, we have a cell wall. What's a cell wall? Things that are hard on the outside. Okay? Like what? What's really, really hard on the outside? Trees. Trees have a bark, right? On the outside. So cell wall is for trees. We do not have a cell wall. Oh, I should just put this. And then, that means all animals, right? There are what? Eukaryotes, multicellular, without cell wall. Okay? Everybody got that? <coughs> awesome. So within the domain of carrier includes what? Four things, right? There are four kingdoms in there that we've talked about. And those were what? Protus, plantae, animalia, and fungi. What am I doing? The same thing that I did before on the, on the picture, right? Let me just go back. That's what I'm doing, right? The four kingdoms. Just in case you're wondering. So Protus tends to be unicellular, simple, right? Uh, Multicellular, eukaryotic means those are what? Your protozoa, your algae, slimes, and molds. Uh, on the plantae, uh, most plants are multicellular, almost all of them, right? eukaryotes. And of course, they're able to produce what? What is the metabolism? They use photosynthesis, right? To produce energy. Now, animalia, again, they're multicellular. They're eukaryotic. Again, all of them are eukaryotic, right? Because that's what we're talking about. And they are what? Heterotropic. Okay, so we are animalia. We are heterotropic. Now, fungi is what? Again, eukaryote. Fungi tends to be what? Decomposers. What are decomposers? You have a question? Hetero means what? So heterotropic of the animalia means that we have different male females. So <clears throat> fungi are decomposers. Decomposers means everything you throw something on the soil, right? Uh, as long as it's able to decompose, right? And this it goes with pollution. If I throw my cell phone in the soil and I leave it there for thousands of years, to decompose almost not all of it right there are certain plastics only that are able to be decomposed right For most of the plastics that we use nowadays they cannot be decomposed what about a banana peel or any fruit peel or any piece of fruit if you throw it in the soil you're good 
because you're not littering per se. Well, by law you are. But per se, whatever you throw there, as long as it's on the grass or in the soil, not on the pavement, right? That is going to decompose and that's going to serve as what? As energy source for plants or the grass on the surroundings. Does that make sense? So, but what allows this decomposed material to be absorbed or to be broken down into elements that plants or animals later on can use? Those are your fungies, which we call decomposers. Does that make sense? Normally on the forest, right, in the rainforest, when you have a bunch of leaves and you have multiple layers of leaves, what do you think is gonna to happen to those leaves as time passes? The leaves will decompose and then those nutrients will be embedded in the soil and now the trees or the plants around it are able to feed out of those nutrients. And what allows this to happen? Fungies. Okay, so they can actually break everything. Who cares about fungies? Who cares about mushrooms? How many of you like mushrooms? And that's just for eating. Now, how do you care of getting free gas? Free gasoline, guys, for your cars. You drive electric cars? So imagine having free gasoline. There are actually scientists are looking into these decomposers because there was actually being created already, not for uh, this one, it's actually for E. coli. They changed the DNA of E. coli and they're able to feed, right, a special nutrients and then the pooping or the side effect, the product of this bacteria is able to be what? Gas, okay? Just by changing the DNA on a bacteria, you're able to get gasoline for free, okay? And I guess we leave it there for today, guys, right? Thank you.